Okinawa, August 28th, 1950. Hi, Stan. Well, I'm spending my last evening quiet and peaceful out on this side lawn writing letters. Tomorrow morning at 8.30 we start boarding a Japanese transport ship for Korea. We haven't done much for the past few days but draw equipment and things. This evening I went out to the rifle range to zero in my carbine. It's a semi and full automatic weapon and sounds like a machine gun when fired automatic. Most of the boys are a little excited about leaving, but I'm as calm as ever. That's one thing I was taught to do, and it's never get excited and to keep cool. Heard from Bernie, and he said if things don't change over here, the army is going to be after him. But I hope things do change, but fast. When our mortar platoon gets there, believe me, things are going to change. I guess I have but a one-track mind tonight. All I talked about was based on one thing. Other than that, nothing is of importance to me but Korea. August 31, 1950 Korea. Dear Mother, I'm a little excited at the present time, but please bear with me. We left Okinawa at 11 a.m. Tuesday and arrived here this afternoon. We were in Japan for a few hours last night. We are still aboard ship and will get off tomorrow morning. It was a very nice trip the whole way up from Okinawa. I still don't know what outfit I will be in, but I'm sure it will be for replacement. I hope I stay with the mortar company. We had a very nice reception when we arrived this afternoon. The president of South Korea was present and also his wife. A Korean band played a few marches and then later an army band played. The terrain over here is very hilly and rough and is going to be mighty tough going at times. I expect to be a private first class before going into combat. I could have had that rank before but I guess I just wasn't up to it as I should have been. All my life I wanted to travel and believe me I'm getting my share now. In fact I don't care for any more. Just one more place is all I'm interested in and that's home. Korea seems to be a lot more modern and civilized than Okinawa. The people dress a lot better too. We were just informed by the company commander that we will be split into different divisions instead of staying together as one company. They just finished having the Catholic confessions out on the deck. They didn't have any Protestant service or Jewish. We will probably get off ship sometime during the night. Well, Mom, I should write more, but I'll try harder next time when I have more privacy. Love to all. Ro. September 4th. Dear Mother, I really don't know how to start this letter, but anyway, I just spent two days and nights on the front lines. We had sort of a mix-up with the riflemen. This morning, shells were swarming over my head so fast that I didn't know right from wrong. These North Koreans just keep coming at us and never stop unless by our fire. So this morning we had to withdraw on account we hadn't had enough men to overtake them. I have had many close calls, but with the help of your prayers, the Lord saw me through. But the thing I hate is one has to keep at it until another company relieves them, and that may be for a week or two. I have been doing a lot of praying myself, and I'm trusting you all will especially pray for all the boys here, because it's much rougher than the papers say. Well, folks, I love you all and want you to pray for me while I'm on the front lines, especially. With love, Roland. September 9, 1950. Dear Mother, first of all, everything is still going fine with me. I guess you all are pretty anxious to hear from me. 
I had to borrow stationery. We pulled back from the front lines yesterday to get reorganized since we lost all our mortars last week. Now we have got two more and are going out some time again today. Things are looking pretty rough, but with the help of God, I'm sure we'll pull through it all safe. I'm sure the fighting can't last too many more months, and I'm sure waiting for that day. My foxhole buddies and I are really asking the Lord for our safety and return to the States. It has rained continually for the past week, but today it has cleared up considerably. Hoping everything is fine at home, and please keep praying that this war will be ended soon, even sooner than we think. Tell Ruth Ann I'm still thinking of her and will write. Please don't worry about me because I'm sure the Lord will see me through no matter how rough the fighting really gets. I'll keep praying. Love to all. Roland. September 13, 1950, Korea. Dear Mother, I'm so glad I have this chance, even though I'm on the front lines. First of all, I'm still fine and hope everything at home is. I haven't heard from you since I was at Okinawa, but I hope to soon. I believe the artillery and the mortar fire is screaming over my head now, so I hope it doesn't interfere with the letter. This has really been some experience for me, even though there are many being killed every day. I've seen too many GIs killed already, and it really makes one sorrow. But with the help of God, I know I'm safe. So please don't worry about me. I have already dug my share of foxholes, but I guess I'll never see the end of that, at least for a while, I think. We are being fed fairly well and also clothed, so that's a great help, too. It's funny how much time one makes to talk with God for help and to read his word and to talk to one's buddy when he is on the battlefront. Well, I'm glad I have my New Testament with me because when I read, it gives me great comfort, especially when the shells are flying overhead. I have talked to a few of my foxhole buddies about Christianity, and most of them at one time were saved, but have backslidden. But since they have been in combat, they have changed their way of living. We would read aloud together the Testament and discuss our past lives. I believe that I have changed some and am living closer to God, not only on the battlefront, but also when I return. It has really been a great lesson to me and real experience also. I would appreciate it if you would let Ruth Ann read the letters I write home because it's very hard for me to get stationary and when I do, it's not too often. Love, Roe. Sunday, September 17, 6.15 p.m. Dear Mother, just thought I'd drop you a few lines while I have the chance. Today started the big push. I think you know what I mean. We had the North Koreans on the run pretty well today. Many of them have already surrendered. A division in the North has captured Seoul, so that may cut out a lot of their supplies. So I figure it won't be too long now before the war will be ended. I hope so, anyway. We have moved up today and will continue to do so as it stands now. They keep us very busy carrying ammunition and digging foxholes all the time. I think I'll get a job with the Works Progress Administration digging ditches when I get home because I'm an expert at it. It shouldn't take much longer now, I hope. This is the day Walter Winchell predicted the war would be over, so I'm hoping it's not too many more days. September 23, 1950, Korea. Dear Mother and all, it's a beautiful day here in Korea. I wish we would have more of them. I'm still doing fine. I feel so good after bathing and shaving in the creek today. We have advanced a lot in the past week. I'm hoping we continue to do so. We have moved up every day so far this week, and the enemy hasn't fired a shell for a number of days. So I'm hoping it won't be long before it will be all over. 
General MacArthur said that all the boys fighting in Korea will be home for Christmas, so please save me a place at the table. The 1st Cavalry is his favorite division, so therefore we hope to parade the streets of Tokyo before sailing home. Those are the kinds of things these fellows always talk about anymore, what they're going to do after the war. I'm getting pretty tired of these sea rations. However, they are good when you're really hungry. It's been almost a month now since I got a letter, but in a way it's a good thing because I think everything is all right anyway, and if not, they would make personal contact with me. If anything does go wrong at home, just contact the Red Cross. I believe that's the fastest way. It gets pretty cold here in these foxholes at night. They issued us wool blankets, so that is a help, besides my field jacket too. The nights are long and the days short. I only wish I could tell you where I'm located, but due to circumstances beyond my control, I am unable to. I'm sure you'll understand. I'm just hoping to be in Seoul within the next week or so. Hope that everything is still fine at home. Keep praying that this war will end soon. I didn't care for the boat ride over, but I'm going to enjoy the ride back. Believe me. Love to all. Roland. September 23, 1950, South Korea. Dear Stan, I'm feeling fine this bright, sunshiny day. For the past week, we have been really giving the enemy some hard luck. We have pushed them back pretty far, and they haven't fired a shot either for the past week. I'm sure this won't last long anymore. I hope General MacArthur is right when he said that all the boys fighting in Korea will be home for Christmas. If that's so, I'm hoping to see you by then, even if I have to make a special trip to Chicago. I haven't yet smoked two packs of cigarettes a day, but I've come awful close to it. That's the best cure for nerves, especially when those enemy artillery shells start zeroing in on your mortar. However, I try to quit once in a while. I'm sure you'll excuse this dirty stationery and my awful writing, but it's the best I can do in these rocky parts of Korea. The army issues beer rations to the men every now and then, so what I do is trade mine for stationery and candy so you see where I get it. There really isn't much that I can say about Korea, just that I'm getting tired of climbing these high rocky mountains every day. The days are short and the nights are long and cold, but they do manage to issue us each a wool blanket, and that's a lot of help too. September 30. Dear Mother, it has been quite peaceful for over a week now and haven't even fired one shot. We are also getting much closer to the capital city of Seoul. It has been a whole month now that I was on the front lines and I'm still going strong. I'm hoping and praying that the war will be over before another month goes by and the way things look, I'm sure it will be. The nights are getting much colder now. Today we were issued our second wool blanket so now it won't be so bad. We were also issued new clothes. We got a few chickens from the few farmers who are living nearby where we are camping. We cooked up some chicken noodle soup for supper last night and for supper tonight we got some vegetables and two more chickens. The reason for that is because we are moving so fast northward that our food supplies can't keep up with us so therefore we make the best of it by eating off the farmers and to tell the truth, it tastes a lot better too. Bobby Faith said he will no doubt be coming over here soon, but I hope he doesn't, and that goes for anyone. There are a few South Koreans who can read a little English, so I let one read my testament and tried to explain what he was reading. I got great enjoyment out of doing that. I'm starting to pick up some of their language, so that makes it a lot easier for me to get along with them. Your son in Christ, Roland.
October 2, 1950. Dear Stan, thank you for giving me the encouragement and the good luck while in Korea. Well, so far I haven't been much of a hero, but the best communist that I've seen yet was a dead one. And I guess that's part of my job to see to that. A few times it was either him or me. We have been on the front lines now for over a month and I'm still going strong with the help of the Lord. I'm sure this war won't last too long the way they are surrendering. Yesterday we brought back 20 trucks full of North Korean prisoners and some every day. You have asked me to give you the location where I am, but we were told not to do that, so I'd better not. However, they may announce where the 1st Cavalry Division is on a news broadcast. I hope they feed us again today. I had a few hot cakes about 4 o'clock this morning and it's way past supper now. I hope you do well in both tennis and bowling. I never did play tennis but bowled quite a few times. However, I plan to do a lot when I get home and hope it's by Christmas. So says General MacArthur. Hope he's right. At the present time, we are not on the very front lines, but in the rear taking sort of a rest, but expect to move forward any time. I will tell you we are 40 miles south of Seoul, the capital of South Korea. Just got back from eating a hot meal, the best ever set in front of my eyes since I've been in Korea. I think perhaps we, the 8th Regiment of the 1st Cavalry Division, are going to be here for a couple days so we may get three hot meals each day. I'm just hoping, of course. October 3, 1950. Dear Mother, Well, everything is about the same, except the war situation seems to be looking better. It's getting much cooler now and looks like rain. However, I'm hoping it doesn't rain. We are to move forward sometime today, so I'm writing this in my spare time. We had chow last night, this morning, and again this noon, but for supper tonight, we start back on sea rations. Well, I hope everything is fine at home. Jean told me Margie was growing very fast and can talk pretty good now. I wish I could see her. Your son in Christ, Roland. P.S. Keep praying for me. Need all your prayers each and every day. I would appreciate it very much if you could send me a small box of self-sealed envelopes and writing papers. 7 October, 50, Korea. Dear Warney, Today we are going to move up 2,000 yards behind the 38th parallel line. There's a small town up there that we have to take. By the way, I'm 10 miles north of Seoul now and have been here for three days. The fellows seem to think that the 1st Cavalry will return to Tokyo after this is over, so I'm hoping that I go there too and probably will. Pyongyang, Korea, October 23, 1950. Dear Mother, News is really sounding good now since we have taken the North Korean capital. We will probably be here for a few more days before going southwest to a seaport city. It may mean the beginning of the end for my life in Korea. Just praying so, anyway. The capital building where we are making quarters is a very large and beautiful one. Connected with the capital is a huge hospital, somewhat different from even our local hospital. Rooms are made up of all descriptions. Reminds me of a museum in a way. However, there is nothing high class at all about either the capital or the hospital. The sun is shining quite bright today, and the 1st Cavalry had their band play a few marches this morning. Sure was nice to hear them play. We had a nice church service yesterday morning, and being that the whole regiment was together, we had a large crowd. The chaplain is the best I've ever heard. He really expresses his love and the blood of Jesus Christ. I enjoyed his sermon. Well, Mother, I still expect to be home for Christmas, but don't be disappointed if I'm not, seeing that I have two years yet to serve. I may stay in Japan, but just as long as they get me out of Korea, I'll be satisfied. So long until I hear from you all. Your son in Christ, Roland. P.S. It's getting much colder now.
Private First Class Roland Lee Bowser was a member of Company M, 3rd Battalion, 8th Cavalry Regiment, 1st Cavalry Division. On November 2, 1950, his company was providing security for the 3rd Battalion Command Post near Unsan, North Korea, when it was hit by a surprise enemy attack and overrun. He was taken prisoner of war. After his capture, he was marched north to a prison camp where he died on an unknown date of dysentery and untreated wounds. Attempts to locate his remains since the close of the war have been unsuccessful.